Dustin Poirier defeated Michael Chandler in the feature bout at UFC 281 in what was one hell of a fight. We all knew this was going to be a slobber knocker. And guess what? There was slobber, and they definitely knocked each other around pretty good. Both guys were slated for big fights going forward, win or lose. They're stars, right? So now that they delivered this classic, what big fights await them? What is next for each guy? And to be fair, we got one of the people that does the matchmaker pieces on MMA Junkie here to uh, start things off. Mike, it's back on you. Yeah, uh, there's some, I mean, good options for both these guys, right? Like, obviously, two of the great action fighters in the UFC right now. I think maybe the clear path forward out of the two is for Dustin Poirier. And to me, that's pretty clearly a fight with Benil Dariush, which he was uh, asked about at the post-fight press conference and said that he thinks it makes a lot of sense. It does. Um, you feel bad for Dariush being like, hey, the guy deserves a title shot. And he does. Um, if this inter or this fight with... Uh, Volkanovski wasn't happening in Makachev, he would absolutely be the guy who should be there. And maybe you could say, hey, the fight's only in February. Why not just sit out? But it's going to be a long break because after that fight, let's say Islam Makachev wins, as a lot of people maybe are expecting him to. He then goes into Ramadan. He's probably not fighting till September, October. Then you're talking about Benil Dariush being out a year at that point after he had just been out for a very long time uh, before this most recent fight with Mateus Gamrot. So to me, when you just look at the lightweight picture, Poirier versus Darius, a ton of sense. That is a clear title eliminator. Dustin back in the mix now uh, because obviously he had lost to Charles Oliveira when he was the champ, but he hasn't fought Islam Makachev. He hasn't fought Alexander Volkanovsky. So if he wins, he's right back there. I'm sure people are asking, what about Charles Oliveira? We thought Charles Oliveira was going to be fighting, you know, in Brazil in January. He's saying that he probably wants some time off, rightfully so, given what he's done. So we don't really know where he goes in there. But Poirier seemingly came out of this fight, you know, as unscathed as, as unscathed as he could be. Probably wants to fight in like the first quarter or so next year after being off 11 months. This one just makes a lot of sense. I don't know if it'll land on that same card as UFC 284 because it is pretty soon for Poirier. But I could see it sometime happening, you know, not long after that. And as far as Chandler, uh, a little trickier for him, but... I think you could probably do that Conor McGregor fight if you really want. I would not be surprised to see Chandler take some time off after all these kind of consecutive wars he's had. Uh, that gives Conor McGregor the time to get back in the USADA pool if he actually does it. Six months to get ready for that. Maybe happens International Fight Week in July. That seems pretty perfect to me. Uh, I think if you look at the lay of the land, not really any layup fights for Conor McGregor right now. I don't know how many he'd be favored to win in, all that stuff. But I think Michael Chandler is a winnable fight for him. He is hittable. I think he's a guy who can get rocked. Conor could hurt, hurt him with that power in that left hand. Um, so if you're kind of looking at the options there, I think maybe those are the two that make sense. Yeah. And, you know, if uh, McGregor doesn't want to get in the USADA pool, maybe Chandler can move up to 205 and fight him there. But uh, how about you, Fada? What are your thoughts here? Yeah, I agree with Mike with uh, Poirier and Dariush. Uh, so, I mean, Dariush was saying it multiple times. Like, I, I love fighting. Like, I just want to fight. it. So I think the idea of him uh, waiting, I don't think is going to sit well with him. And like Mike said, you know, Islam ha uh, has Ramadan coming up. So he's going to be out for a while after that. Uh, so I like that fight because also the, if Darius is not going to get a title shot, having a name like Corey on your resume or just fighting a guy like Corey, he deserves that. It comes with a lot of attention. It's going to land on a big card, whether pay-per-view or a fight night main event. It's going to have – because him fighting Mateus Gamrot and Gamrot is an amazing fighter, but it felt a bit like a step down because he was calling for a title shot then. And it was a risky fight as well. So I think he deserves a name like Dustin Poirier. And for Dustin Poirier – I mean, if you look at his recent run, he's been incredible. The two losses came to, like, very good grapplers. So that's a good test for him as well before he gets into the title picture. If he can beat uh, a Benil Dariush, who's got really good grappling, I think that will help his case as well in terms of getting a title shot against potentially another grappler uh, in Issam Makachev. As for Michael Chandler, like, I like the Connor fight. I think it makes a lot of sense. But I don't know how... Like chasing a Connor fight just seems tough because you never know what Connor is going to do, right? He can kind of do whatever he wants in a way just because he holds the name and the the the, the pay per view buys and everything. So I don't know if he's gonna. I do think he should take take some time off, and it could line up well with Connor. But it almost feels like waiting for Connor McGregor could be a waste of time because who said he's going to get that right? The only other name I could think of in lightweight that would work well for Michael Chandler is maybe Rafael dos Anjos. Um, he's coming off of that big win over Renato Moicano. He has a name, and I think. It's a similar situation to I know Dos Anjos may not be the Dos Anjos of 2015 when he was lightweight champ, but we saw when they matched up 
Michael Chandler with Tony Ferguson, a big name. And, you know, Michael Chandler is coming off of a loss himself, so I think RDA is another option. All right, Ghost, I see your quarter there on the arcade game. You're next, right? I want to go back to Mike, though, for a second. Mike, clear something up for me. You were there in New York. What about the Eddie Alvarez uh, possibility? I know it's kind of a long shot, right? But did you feel like Dana was possibly warm to it? I know he says we're focusing on youth, but he loves big fights. That's a big-name fighter. Yeah, um, I don't know. I guess it'll just be interesting. I think it probably falls on what Eddie Alvarez is asking for, right? Like if he's asking for, you know, the sun, the star, and the moon from the UFC as far as pay to come back, I don't think they're going to be willing to invest it for him at this stage of his career. But if they're able to reach a deal that they like and he likes, I could see him coming back for a couple. Um, I think it would make sense for him, you know, if he doesn't go to, say, Bellator or wherever else. Dana said he reached out personally to him. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, and Chandler seemed warm to it. So I, I think it just depends what you're trying to do with Michael Chandler, right, at this point. Like, are you trying to get him wins? I think if you want to try to get him back on the rebound, that is a great option for him. I like the RDA suggestion from Farah there. Um, I think the Connor one is potentially one that can go both ways, right? Like if Chandler beats him, it's great. You have, you're able to invest a lot in him. I think he's got a more sturdy future in the UFC than Connor does. But if Connor wins, it's obviously, you know, a Connor McGregor win, which is much needed and he's back on the track. So um, yeah, I, I don't think the Eddie Alvarez one is, is crazy or unrealistic. I could see it maybe happening, but it's just all going to depend on what he's asking for. Yeah, we'll see what happens, but at least they're talking. Floyd in the chat room says Chandler is too worried about the fans and the fight of the night. I would disagree, and even he's come to terms with how reckless he was versus Gagey. I thought he used his wrestling. He won round two. He started to use round his wrestling in round three, and he just too much momentum in that takedown. Dustin Poirier, savvy, was able to uh, you know capitalize on that. So I would I would disagree with you, Floyd. Goes. What are your thoughts on uh, this topic here? I think what's next for both of them should be an ice bath. And I think Michael Chandler should dive in head first. I am with Floyd 100%. I think he makes a good point there. Look, Michael Chandler is addicted to what goes on in these fights, man. The big stage, the big fight, and the big paycheck. I think he's addicted to that. And I'm honestly, I think the UFC is too. And that's why he's not anywhere near a title shot now. But it doesn't mean he's not going to get big fights. He's not going to get big paychecks. And really the way, you know, Farah and Mike line that up. That Conor McGregor fight, I don't see why that does not happen. He does need time off, and it kind of works with Conor's timeline, and it is a huge fight. You know those two are going to chirp at each other. You know it's going to be crazy in, in the cage. So I, I just think it's an addiction, man. Michael Chandler fought great in round two, and if he fought a lot of his fights like that, like he fought in round two, the trajectory of his career would be completely different. But he doesn't do that, okay? And Hey, who's complaining, right? We all love ourselves a Michael Chandler fight. But I do see that happening, George. Dustin Poirier, yeah, man. Benil Dariush, I mean, that, I think that's a slam dunk. What I want to see out of Dustin Poirier, which I thought his performance was tremendous. I thought his defense was great. I thought his yeah. patience was great. But the one thing that I do want to see, and it's unfortunate. A lot of people kind of put Islam Makhachev and Khabib Nurmagomedov in the same boat. Because, yeah, we get it. Stylistically, they're very similar fighters. But the one thing that I can't get out of my mind was just Dustin not really having an answer off of his back. And I think we saw that again in round two of the, the Michael Chandler fight. So in, in Benil Darius, you know that's where he's going to want to put him. And if he does, I'd like to see a little bit of an improvement there from Dustin Poirier because Dustin Poirier is a great fighter, and I would like to see him fight Islam Makhachev, but I need to know that he's shored up that deficiency a little bit. 